again, Meg, and we're going to do a little bit of announcements and get started just so we have enough time. So welcome everyone to WordPress Accessibility Meetup. Just to get started, if you have not been here before, uh, we do have a Facebook group that you can connect in between meetups. And if you just go to Facebook and you search WordPress Accessibility, it's going to come up. It's a great place to get answers to questions or share ideas or articles about accessibility in WordPress. Um, get help if you're working on something and you're stuck. So we highly recommend joining the Facebook group. I always get asked, and I'm sure that someone will ask it later on, um, but so I always reiterate this, this meetup is being recorded. Uh, it takes us about a week to get corrected captions because we always release the videos with corrected captions and a full transcript. So once that is available, you will be able to uh, watch the recording. If you go to equalizeddigital.com slash meetup, there's a section on that page where you can see all of our past meetups and this meetup will be there. If you want to get notified when meetups are available or of upcoming events or other accessibility news, we encourage you to join our email newsletter. And you can find that if you go to equalizeddigital.com slash focus dash state. Uh, I think if I have things set up right, it will redirect you there after the meetup ends, but maybe not. Um, so if you join our email list, we send about two emails a month sometimes one, depending on how we're doing that month. And uh, that's a good way also to get notified when the recording is available from the meetup. We are seeking additional sponsors for the meetup. So we, uh, all of our services, the live captioning and the transcription and things like that, they do cost us money. And so we, as volunteers, rely on sponsors to help us cover those costs when they're available. So if your company is interested in sponsoring Meetup, please reach out to myself or Paula and we will do, um, we can share all that information with you about sponsorship. If you have any suggestions or you need any additional accommodations to make the Meetup work for you, uh, you can contact us either in the chat today or if you want to email us, you can email us at meetup at equalizeddigital.com, and that will go to both of us. Um, we are also looking for uh, speakers for the fall. So if you would be interested in speaking, you can also reach out to us that way as well. I am Amber Hines. I am the lead organizer of WordPress Accessibility Meetup. My company is called Equalize Digital. If you're not familiar with us, we're a certified B Corporation, a WordPress VIP agency, and we are a member of the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. And really our goal is to try and create a world where all people have equal access to information on the web. And that's what motivated us to start this and try and grow both our own knowledge and community knowledge around accessibility in WordPress. We have a WordPress plugin called Accessibility Checker that scans for accessibility problems and puts reports, sort of like WAVE, if you're familiar with that, in your WordPress dashboard. And you can get a hold of us if you're interested on Twitter. We are at Equalize Digital, or our website is equalizeddigital.com. Our sponsor this evening for live captions is WP Engine. WP Engine is a WordPress technology company that provides hosting and a suite of tools for developers, including uh, the local app, the Genesis themes. And more recently, they bought um, advanced custom fields and uh, WP Migrate and a bunch of other developer tools. Um, they have generously sponsored our live captions for our evening meetup for a year. So we very much appreciate them because they are helping to make this accessible. Uh, we always encourage people to thank our sponsors online. So if you are on Twitter, please tweet at WP Engine and say thank you to them for sponsoring our meetup to help encourage them to want to continue doing it in the future. 
This evening, our transcript and our SRT file, which is what we use for captions when we upload them, the final video to YouTube, is being provided by Empire Caption Solutions. They are a company that does closed captions, audio description, they provide ASL interpretation, and um, they've been very generously donated their services to us so that we can ensure we have good quality captions on the final video after the live event, which we very much appreciate. And you can thank them or tag them on Twitter at Empire Caption. We have three upcoming events that I want to highlight for you. Uh, tomorrow we have a special event. So if you don't get enough accessibility tonight and you wanna come back tomorrow, um, we're partnering with WordPress VIP to do a panel discussion. Uh, it's gonna be myself, a developer from WordPress VIP, who's gonna be talking about what they've been doing to make their hosting panel more accessible. Um, there will be an attorney there who can talk about or answer legal questions. And then um, my friend, Alex, who is a developer and a member of um, the WordPress accessibility core team, and who happens to be a blind individual will also be available as well. Uh, so that's tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central. If you go on Meetup, you can find the link to where you hop over on WordPress VIP's website to register for that. It will be held on Zoom and there will be live captions. Uh, our next Meetup for WordPress Accessibility Meetup that's officially in our time slots is uh, a meetup I'm super excited about on Thursday, August 4th at 10 a.m. Central. Dax Castro will be talking about accessible web documents and PDFs, especially because uh, accessibility on the web goes beyond just your website. It goes to all of the documents you upload. And so he'll be talking about that. And then in this same time slot later in August, on August 15th at 7 p.m. Central, uh, Danielle Zaccaro will be talking about setting up WordPress themes for accessible full site editing. So we have a lot of exciting talks coming up and we hope you'll join us. Now for the main event, I am super excited to introduce Meg. Uh, Meg is the lead designer and developer and accessibility specialist for Bet Hannon business websites. Uh, growing up building computers and gaming, tech has been a major part of Meg's life since childhood. And they also have a disabled sister, at which I think motivated Meg to get into accessibility. Um, so I have had the pleasure of speaking with her on other panels, or them on other panels, and I'm very excited, Meg, to have you here. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let you take over and feel free to introduce yourself anymore. But I know that you have a, your wealth of knowledge and you share great things on Twitter, which I very much appreciate. So thank you. Yeah, not, not a problem. And I'm happy to be here and um, I am gonna go ahead and get this party started. Um, I do apologize in advance, everybody. I'm, I'm braced up today. And it's my dominant hand. So at some point I'm gonna accidentally slide eight slides. I, I have a feeling, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, and I've also already told Amber to, um, to as soon as somebody tells me I'm talking too fast, just uh, interrupt me, interrupt me, interrupt me. So um, please, please be vocal about that if I need to slow down. All right. Um, so this is the, alt scene, when and how to write good alternative text. Um, the, the, the timing of this pre doing this presentation um, wa was, was really good because <clears throat> uh, around the time, I was actually starting to get a lot of alt text questions, um, which is interesting because accessibility has had this, this um, ebb and flow recently. Um, and sometimes all of a sudden everybody is talking about, are the more advanced um, uh, development parts of accessibility. And then the new influx of people come in and, and it comes back to things like alt text. Um, so I was really excited to do it because I have um, 
strong some strong opinions about alt text and uh i and i feel like uh it it, it, it um <laughs> i just hope at the end of this you have a better understanding of alt text uh uh, a better understanding of it, why it's important, and when and how to write it. Uh, so let's begin. Oops. And I'm already messing up. Okay, there we go. Uh, first of all, uh, like Amber was saying, um, Miller, uh, I also go by Mimi. Um, I'm the lead disability at Henan Business Websites, my late sister development and physically disabled. Uh, so throughout my life, I was always drawn to people with with disabilities. Um, and in 2017, the concept ex of accessibility was revealed to me. And it made so much sense. It was hard to believe that those two huge parts of my life hadn't collided sooner. So for me, web accessibility uh, will always be about the people it benefits. And my end goal is to keep learning and educating until it's an industry standard. Um, you will see a cat walking on my desk. She is back there and keeps popping up and she'll probably also forward a slide. Um, so what is alternative or alt text? Uh, on a semantic level, alt text is the manual description of an image. Uh, this text tells automated software like screen reader users and search engine crawlers what the image depicts. Uh, and sometimes alt text can be pretty simple and other times it can be a little bit more complex and open ended. For example, I intentionally chose a mini comic here to illustrate just how open ended it can actually be. Uh, I have my alt text for this comic up on the screen here, which says a four panel comic, a person's head with a space and a smaller version of themselves drawn in the empty head space, their, their head self. In the first panel, the person has a neutral expression. The head self starts getting gradually more comfortable in the space until they are snuggled up with a re reading a book in the final panel. The caption said, uh, reads, um, I'm always getting stuck in my head, so I'm trying to make it a nice place to be. The person is smiling pleasantly in the final panel. I went for an overall description of the comic. However, effective alt text could also be a panel by panel description if it's individual images or even just all together. Um, and this is also a good example of how alt text is just as much of a reflection of the writer as the image they've chosen is. So why is alt text important? Um, I, I mean, if an image is worth a thousand words, why is it so important to still describe an image in approximately less than 200 characters? And there are many reasons. Uh, first of all, first and foremost is accessibility. Um, alt text describes an image to screen reader users. And um, a lot of people think that screen reader users are just people um, who may be blind, but that's not true. There's low vision users who are hybrid screen reader users. Uh, there are people with cognitive disabilities who use, um, who use screen readers. And even my, my, I myself these days, as I've gotten more comfortable with using my screen reader, I'll turn it on to read articles to me uh, while I'm still waking up. Um, and so when the screen reader comes across that image, it actually tells the, the user what it is. And this provides context for those users. Um, it's also important for search engine op optimization or SEO. Um, search engine crawlers uh, index images and they actually, um, it, it, it makes it relative content to the content on the page. Uh, so um, if there are two websites that are ident identical down to the word um, and the images, but one of those websites has alt text and the other doesn't, the one with alt text is actually going to be ranked higher because the crawlers have indexed these as additional relevant content to the subject. Uh, so it is incredibly important for um, SEO rankings. Um, it's also circumstantial. Uh, there are times, there, there are so many times and reasons that you could load a web page and the images won't load. Uh, for example, I live in the country. I don't have the best internet. And sometimes images won't load because my bandwidth is low. Um, or every once in a while, you land on a web page at the exact time it's doing a server backup. And, and that lags all of the assets. So the images won't load, but you'll see text there. And that is the alt text. 
So for users who, for whatever reason, couldn't load the images, they can still actually read the alt text uh, to confirm context, uh, especially if it's um, in something important like words on, it, on text or instructions. Now, what is and is not the purpose of alt text? Um, the, the ultimate purpose of alt text is to provide the same context uh, to a screen reader user as an image would a sighted user or somebody who wasn't using a screen reader. Imagine listening to a baseball game on the radio. Remember the radio? Um, but instead of describing the game, Harry Carey just sat silently for three hours. Finally, at the end, he says, well, the Cubs just won the World Series. Thanks for tuning in. W would you feel robbed? of the experience? Would you have the ability to manage every inning in perfect detail without ever having seen it? Or would you prefer Harry's enthusiastic play-by-plays whose energy would reflect the mood of the stadium every single minute, making you feel like you were actually there? To me, all text is to website assets as sports broadcasters are to, are to games and they should reflect the same purpose. Um, I also feel like alt text is a good opportunity for you to judge your own content. A good example is anyone who knows me knows I struggle with rambling and I saw my boss here earlier, so I know she's probably nodding enthusiastically in front of her camera right now. Um, recently, I was trying out a new art program and I made a comic. I uploaded it to Twitter and realized a million different ways I could have worded the content better and made it more accessible as I maxed out Twitter's 1000 character limit. Um, if you find yourself struggling with your alt text, it could be a good opportunity to, uh, to ask yourself if the assets you're using are actually relevant to your content or if you did the best job possible creating your own media. Um, obviously, that's kind of a, a little bit um, uh, it depends on the on the on the situation, but I I do look at alt, alt text that way. Um, alt text. <laughs> let's talk about what alt text is not about. Um, alt text is not a place to embed keywords and tags into your posts. I still see this all the time. Um, you know, you get you 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 try to add. It, it, ever since the meta descriptions and keywords have become a thing and since people have gotten um, familiar more familiar with the concept of seo people are looking for every opportunity possible to shove keywords and and search searchable objects into their content alt text is not the place to do that it has a purpose so just adding it for for keywords is not going to help and as accessibility has become more and more of a demand, it really wouldn't surprise me that at some point this was actually flagged um, or and you were docked on your um, SEO. That's speculation. I'm not throwing that out there as fact. It just wouldn't surprise me. Um, it's also not an excuse to continue creating pictures with text on them. We will elaborate on this later. Um, it's also not a place to go into additional details um, that people wouldn't have, uh, that sighted users wouldn't have. Uh, it's also not a place to hit, to drop jokes. Uh, I see this a lot where people have some sort of inside joke going on um, in the alt text uh, and it's just inappropriate most of the time. It doesn't fit the context. And I think it's confusing more often than not to have uh, you know, if you have a group photo and you want to be passive aggressive in your alt text and you're like, thank God so and so wasn't there. That's not a, that, uh, that's just not a good place to, to, to put jokes and stuff because that it defeats the purpose. Now let's talk about some myths uh, uh, that you may have heard about alt text. And this is where I may or may not become controversial. As web accessibility is still being figured out, there are still a lot of standards that are up in the air. Uh, and that's okay. After all, those who benefit from accessibility are humans who have different opinions and thought processes. So in my opinion, I don't think things like alt text can be universally standardized because we're not creating websites for robots. So these are my alt text myths um, and some of which you may not agree with or have actually heard contra contradicting instructions before. Um, myth one is objectiveness versus subjectiveness. Um, one of the first things I was told when I was learning more about accessibility is that alt text should always be objective. And I don't agree with that. 
Um, I think there are opportunities or times when it should be objective, but I also think there are times it's appropriate that subjectiveness is, um, is maybe not required, but preferred. Um, objective alt text would be things like data or a landscape, cityscape, um, or even a product. You know, you probably want your, your product alt text to be more objective than it is subjective, just out of fairness. Um, subjective alt text are paintings, food. If you have an image of, if you're a food blog, blogger and you have an image of, of a, a recipe you made, you'll probably want to add a delicious looking array of spices or, or you know, whatever, because you're using that image to um, elicit a, a yummy reaction from your users. And, um, on, and, and so you're using it for that purpose. So I think that it's okay to add subjective terms like delicious or yummy. Um, animals, for example, uh, if you're, depending on the website you have, if you have a, a, a website and you're blogging about your adorable cat, then you're probably gonna add um, adorably looking at the camera, which is a completely subjective. However, if you're running an article about animal abuse, and you have an image of an animal on there, then, you know, some of the terms you may use may be subjective, but they add to the purpose of the photo. Um, myth two, blind people aren't in my company's demographic, so we don't need alt text. Every single accessibility person out there has heard this about something about accessibility in one way or another, and it's just not true. Uh, one, there's not a consistent analytical way to detect screen reader usage, so there's really not a, a good way to know this. Uh, two, it is in incredibly short-sighted. Let's talk about a hypothetical company that has no people with a vision impairment in it. This hypothetical company that with a huge demographic and not a single one of them even wears glasses. Well, you know, the next day one of those people you know, gets, gets uh, uh, you know, an eye injury or, or something. Now, all of a sudden, they have a vision impairment and your website isn't set up. They still want to be your, your um, they still want to want to buy your products. But if your website isn't set up for them, you're making them unable to. So anytime, it just the demographic argument is never valid. I, it, no. Um, Myth three, alt text takes too long and is too hard to write. It doesn't need to be that complex. It, it, it is as simple as, you know, I can, I'm, this is, I'm holding a lighter that was just on my desk, a gray Bic lighter, you know, I, it, it, and sometimes it can be that easy. Um, so, it, you know, it, it really doesn't take as much time, a few seconds per photo per article. Um, myth four, every single image requires alt text. Uh, decorative images do not require alt text and we will talk about the definitions later. Uh, myth five, you shouldn't include descriptions only non-visually impaired people will understand, like colors. Um, I disagree with this and this may be uh, controversial. Uh, personally, I don't think we should shy away from mentioning something like color or a shape because it does add to a user's mental picture. Um, it doesn't necessarily take away uh, from the experience of somebody who was uh, blind since birth uh, to, to describe a color, but um, if somebody who was sighted for a period of the year, their life and is now blind, um, that will add to their experience. So I don't think that it can I, I don't think it's something that can be shied away from, that should be shied away from, um, or strictly told never, never use uh, visual only descriptors. Um, but I've also been told not to use those. So that may be something that you have to figure out for yourself, whether or not you're comfortable with. Um, myth six, you never need alt text if you have a caption on your photo. Captions and alt text generally have different purposes. If your caption is describing the image, then no, you don't need alt text. Uh, but image captions are usually something cutesy like beach day or yay date night, um, which do not effectively describe the image. Um, and this is very, very, very relevant to social media. 
Um, so whether it is on your website or social media, your images will more often than not require alt text in addition to a caption. So let's talk about some best practices. Um, on this slide, there is an array of Polaroid-esque images that are completely blank with strips of tape on them um, in their corners. Um, so first and foremost, you want to avoid uh, starting off alt text with image of or picture of. Screen readers announce uh, what the, that, that the element they're on is an image. So this becomes repetitive information. There are exceptions. For example, um, if, it, if it defines the media, um, a comic, a painting, um, uh, I had one more example, but I didn't write it down. So of course I forgot it. If it, if it affects the media, it is acceptable to, to define what the image is, but say a picture of a bunch of, because a screen already tell the user that that's what it is. Um, Use proper grammar and spelling. Um, um, it is, I'm gonna combine a couple of these where also use simple language and avoid acronyms. Um, this is all about making that effective alt text where, you know, if a user is, use, is hopping to an image out of context and the acronym hasn't been defined to them yet, uh, then you're, you're going to want to uh, make sure that you define that acronym within the alt text and, and um, keep it as an independent entity. Um, then it comes to proper grammar and simple language. This is not making your uh, alt text too complex. I also avoid, I try to avoid special characters like ampersands um, and it, it, it just helps translate the image much better uh, to users. Um, try to avoid one word alt text. It is rarely descriptive enough. Uh, maybe there's an instance where one word alt, alt text is effective enough. It's, it's gotta be a one in a million chance. So, you know, it, it, that is just really, really, really low effort alt text uh, that should be avoided. Um, it also won't help your SEO. Um, approximately 125 characters. Um, while that is the ideal length, there will always be unavoidable expectations to this, or exceptions to this. Um, a more complex image may require more. Uh, do try to keep this in mind, however, because you want to be considerate of people's time. You know, when you're having image descriptions read to you, it takes a lot longer than just looking at the image. So um, you're never going to be cited for consistently having 150 character alt text, even 200 character. But do be conscious that reading those images to people do take time. Um, a good example of this is, um, I'm sure many of you have heard about this, uh, but the, the recent um, uh, solar system photos that came out and NASA did such a great job describing this alt text, but obviously, it was, I meant to actually get the exact character count, but if I had to eyeball and guess, it was between three and 400 characters. Um, maybe not that many, but anyway, but it was a lot of characters, but it was needed because you were literally describing space. And obviously going into descriptions, uh, going into detail like that when it's necessary is better than being like, oh, I can't go over 125 and then losing that experience on people who, who would want to hear about it. So when do you all add alt text? Um, one of the biggest accessibility loopholes I see people trying to create is, well, technically aren't all images decorative? And no, the answer is no, they're not. They, uh, people use images for a reason. Uh, they add context, evoke a feeling, and sometimes even give instructions. Um, these are not decorative, but uh, decorations, but content. Uh, and that content needs to have a description that would provide the same context to a visually impaired user as it would a sighted user. Uh, for example, uh, the images on this screen, um, in my non-decorative column, I have a vector cartoon drawing of a cat and it has its head kind of talk, cocked to the side, looking inquisitively. Um, and this would be on a website for a reason. This would, you know, add, an adorable aesthetic to, to a design or an article. And 
that kind of aesthetic would want to be translated to alt text. Um, in my decorative column, I do want to say uh, this, this decorative image does have alt text on my slides, but um, this is a floor to leaf. And times you may not need alt text are for these small accents, uh, uh, swirls, backgrounds, icons, sometimes they require alt text, sometimes they don't. That's actually depending on the context and what they're doing there. Um, so, you know, like on awesome or something like that. Um, background images, uh, these things don't, uh, patterns, patterns. These things generally don't require alt text and are um, defined as decorative. Uh, the image on this slide is a grid array of sample logo concepts that all have filler text. Um, so let's talk about logos. While logos themselves are excluded from accessibility requirements in the design sense, they do still require alt text. If they're linking somewhere, the alt text should be the link to the of the destination, for example, home. Um, however, as a static images, the alt text ideally should be organization, name, logo. If there's a small subline or tagline uh, in the logo or any text at all, that should also be included with any abbreviations or acronyms spelled out in full. Example, if the logo is using EST -est, um, in the subline, make sure you use established in the, in the alt text. So it would be a uh, company, Lo and I, you know, I'm not saying like company, literally the word I'm saying, you know, equalized digital logo established, uh, you know, uh, 2016. I'm sorry, Amber, I don't know with you, um, but you get the idea. Um, um, another pet peeve of mine, um, it is not uncommon to see a featured on section uh, followed by a single image that contains a group of, you know, 10, 15 logos. Uh, the, alt the alt text for these logo clouds range from labeling every logo to simply a group of logos. Uh, I've seen this image treated as a link to a site's media page, which I'll also touch on later. And, and these are practices you want to avoid. Ideally, you want to, if, you, if, you do, if your website does have a featured on with a bunch of logos, those should really be individual images um, because that will create a more um, comprehensive experience. So let's talk about some image links because this is also where it gets a little bit muddy. Personally, I completely avoid using image links and I also encourage my clients to do so. Um, I would much prefer to use images to add to a user's experience rather than giving them a game of hide and seek, trying to figure out which images are links and which aren't. Especially in cases of content management systems, uh, CMS, like WordPress, where some creators default images uh, to be links to the media file. This can be extremely confusing and cause users to prevent clicking on any images uh, with a link because they'd assume that it would just open the images media file. So I don't like mixing content like this because I feel like it doesn't create a predictable experience in one way or another. Uh, let's talk about that website. Um, I, I did an audit on a website recently that had a featured on logo array on their website. But something I didn't realize until I actually began keyboard testing um, was this was a link to their media page. In this case, it ex completely excluded non-keyboard users who may not have even realized it was a link unless they interacted with the image. And that's something that somebody just scrolling down a page is unlikely to do. Um, and I feel like those experiences are occur more often than not uh, in um, when you start mixing media and turning images into links. Um, but if you do have an image link, it needs to go to the, the, the alt text needs to be the destination. Um, in, in cases of featured images, uh, the, the links on blog posts, an argument can be made that if the image also links to the blog post, it can be the image's alt text if there's an alternative clearly labeled, uh, such as the, the post title, title. Um, this seems to be the ca a case of personal preference amongst the community, with some people not caring about the redundancy and others preferring the image not be a link at all. 
I like the image as a link because they're usually a large clicking area that gives people with mobile issues uh, a large target to click on. Uh, but I also understand the issue of redundancy. Uh, this is one of those fun accessibility gray areas people talk about that currently doesn't have a 100% solid best practice answer because somewhere someone has to has to bleh, I'm sorry, someone somewhere has to compromise. I've seen some people use ARIA hidden on blog post images, and I'm not sure how I feel about that, honestly. Uh, it does solve the redundancy issue, but excludes content from a screen reader, which is generally not recommended. Um, I'm sure these standards will change in the upcoming year, but at this moment, this practice is still up in the air and you're going to have to, uh, you know, choose that for yourself and make the, make the best choice you think is good for your website. Primarily, I see image links that are text-based. I discourage this practice with every accessible fiber in me. Unlike standard text, rendered text on images can't be programmatically adjusted to become more readable. And often it's using a script or a display font or adjusted weird and shoved into each other. Um, and it's, there's often a low contrast color combination being used. And I see this all the time. For example, the image on this slide reads, read more about me, but it's using a hard to read font. Additionally, the about is not only cursive, but the orange I'm so fond of using only has a 2.7 to one contrast ratio against white. This is, a pot uh, this is a potentially unreadable link that can't be converted because it's rendered text. For this reason, text on images, especially when they're intended as a link, should really be avoided. So let's talk about some, let's use some real world examples. Uh, we are going to use three examples. This is easy mode, then we're gonna get into medium difficulty, and then we're gonna get into expert mode. Um, on this slide, there's a picture of a white cat with a tiny terry cloth towel wrapped around its head like someone would do when they just got out of the shower. Uh, it's in some sort of ceramic bowl and it's resting its head on the rim and looking directly at the camera. Honestly, if I had to explain the look on its face, it seems pretty fed up with the photo shoot. So the bad, the bad alt text for this is referencing again, our one word description. After hearing that description, do you think the word, just the word cat would be descriptive enough for this image? Um, and we're also gonna talk about uh, using a caption as alt text again, spa day. Um, and that is another example of captions aren't, uh, captions are for being cute, alt text are for being description, descriptive. Um, uh, I'm okay with okay alt text because it still gets some of the point across. A cat with a towel on its head. Um, it gets the point across. It's not, it's not super descriptive, but it does get the point of the image across. So if you were in a rush and this was your alt text, I don't think I would, I would have a problem with that personally. Um, so great alt text is, uh, my, my specific alt text for this photo is, um, a white cat with golden eyes and a small towel wrapped around its head sitting in a ceramic bowl with its head resting on the rim looking directly at the camera. Um, this can still be changed. Uh, for example, if it's not super important to the context of the image, uh, it's okay to make intuitive leaps. For example, uh, I have no idea what kind of container this cat is sitting on. Uh, the, the ridges on it remind me of pottery, so my interpretation, I say ceramic bowl. But for all I know, that's a vase or even a hamper. You don't need to be so worried about being wrong about a detail of the image that you cave under your own pressure. Um, and, uh, and depending on the context, details can be changed or removed while retaining the integrity, such as eye color, uh, the word ceramic, or even looking directly at the camera. I included those things because I think they add context to the image, but they aren't entirely necessary and could still be removed to reduce character count and retain the integrity of the alt text. More considerations that can change the alt text. The reason you're using this image should be reflected in the alt text, especially if it's more relevant to the content of the page it's on. For example, my alt text for this photo is a general description. But if the photo was on a satirical post about dressing up cats, it may be more important to focus on the cat's somewhat annoyed expression rather than going into details about what kind of bowl it's in. Let's level up. Medium. The image on this page is a beautiful painting and I'm not sure if it's digital or physical paints. 
The canvas is primarily focused on a huge intimidating red dragon. Below it is a lone soldier standing on the edge of a cliff, holding a sword and staring up the dragon, who is exhaling a small stream of fire in the soldier's direction. The background is a dark stormy sky with a large ray of sunlight penetrating the clouds. You can see several other dragons soaring in the background illuminated by the sun ray. And that is a lot of alt text. But this image is open for interpretation. It's art. It, it is a painting. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about this painting. I love this painting. I found this painting and immediately wanted to use it. Um, so bad alt text is a painting. Again, is that descriptive enough? Another caption, who ticked off Daenerys. That's also a joke, which is also inappropriate for the alt text. Um, okay, alt text is the bare minimum, a painting of a dragon fighting someone, a person getting ready to fight a fire-breathing dragon. Bare minimum, to me, I'm an artist, so for me, I, I, I wanna hear more, you know, but, um, but I guess it gets the point across. Um, this image, this is where I think that alt text needs to be subjective and the alt painting would be so different depending on the site it's on and who's looking at it. For example, something I didn't notice until the third or fourth time I looked at this is there's actually a writer on this dragon. Somebody is here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to try something out. Okay. Boom. Yeah, somebody is actually writing on this dragon, and I didn't notice that at first. And that little detail could potentially change the entire meaning of this image. So, you know, what do we, what, how are we interpreting this image? Uh, this has all of a sudden become an art history lesson. Um, you know, is it for that, that dragon could wipe that soldier out in, in, barely a bigger poof of fire than he's using right now. So how do we know that this guy isn't just, you know, your dragon Uber is here just picking up this soldier after he just got done fighting a bunch of people. So, you know, how this how this painting is described is likely going to describe or uh, is going to depend on the person describing it. And with art being subjective and interpretive in, a, in and of itself, having subjective alt text based on the writer's interpretation is only natural. And I also feel like this is um, a time for um, longer alt text. You know, it, it, art, art needs more than 125 characters. Um, so this is, this is um, for me, a medium uh, um, difficulty alt text experience because you just don't know where to start. And um, I think it's also a great dialogue starter. Let's go on. All right, complex. So on this slide, there's a pie chart labeled the best movies ever. Um, the pie slivers do not include percentages. So the data is completely visual and the assumptions would be made based on visually observing the, the sizes of the slivers. Their labels are Waiting for Forever, The Naked Gun, The Boondock Saints, A Scanner Darkly, Moulin Rouge, and Pirate Radio. And yes, these are my favorite movies. Um, Charts and graphs require special attention when creating alt text. Uh, in my experience, they're also often the most overlooked, skipped, or overwhelming examples of bad alt text when they really don't need to be. If you already have the graph, you already have the data you need for the alt text. Uh, but providing too much information or unnecessary information is a way to make the, the, the data completely lost on your readers. Uh, my bad examples for this is, and I'll only read two of, you, two of them, um, a pie chart that helps nobody, um, a visualization of why everyone else's opinion is wrong, another joke, not needed, not helpful, and my third example of bad alt text is loaded with unnecessary information, including where this sample was taken, which hopefully is mentioned in the actual post this, part, this pie chart actually exists on. And you're going to lose people if, you're, if, if, if your data alt text is this complex. So we're going to move on to our part two of complex. So, OK. I, um, Okay, alt text. I've seen this before. 
um, where uh, my okay example of alt text is a pie chart illustrating poll results for our best movies, the naked gun being the most popular and waiting for forever being the least popular. Um, I've seen this before. And you know what? I don't hate that kind of description for an alt text, giving you the, the, the smallest amount, the largest amount, um, as long as you elaborate. The best alt text for a graph or a chart actually has nothing to do with the alt text itself. The number one rule for making a chart or graph accessible has nothing to do with the alt text, but a supportive de description directly pre or proceeding the graph. Not doing this is, extremely com is an extremely common form of human error. And that's being so familiar with a concept or of data results that you forget that the people you're explaining it to may not have the concept grasp as well as you do. And I accidentally do this every day when trying to explain code, uh, you know, a code thing to someone I work with or, or my partner, and I just watch their gla eyes glaze over or my boss just says, let me just stop you there. Um, and this is why a supportive description of a graph or chart explaining the data and results is so important. And that's not just for your visually impaired or cognitively impaired users, but for all of your users. Um, my, my great example for this, for, for this uh, pie chart um, alt text is a pie chart illustrating poll results for the best movies. The Naked Gun, 30%. The Boondock Saints, 25%. Moulin Rouge, 15%. Pirate Radio, 15%, A Scanner Darkly, 10%, Waiting for Forever, 5%, to the point. And that's what you want to get. And then elaborate in the description. So a few things to consider with alt text. Um, here we have an image of, uh, or excuse me, on this slide, we have an image uh, of a man with a beard and glasses smiling at the camera and giving a thumbs up. Um, I, I really feel like alt text should be indicative of the reason that image was chosen. Um, I mean, and, and, and it should affect and it. I'm, I apologize. I, I think I just, uh, talked too much. Um, all, uh, and, and it, it's, as we discussed earlier, it's going to be different depending on the context and it's never going to be in the same context twice. So you know, you really do want to make sure that um, that you've that, you know, one, it's indicative of the reason it was chosen and that it effectively describes your image. Um, an example I want to use actually has nothing to do with alt text. Um, this has to do with app uh, captions, which is, you know, apples and oranges. They're both fruit, but obviously apples and oranges. Like every other 30 year old adult. I watch Pokemon on Amazon all the time. And the captions, I also, I, I, I always have captions on. And I love what Amazon does with their captions for Pokemon. If you've ever watched Pokemon, you know that all the, all the Pokemon do is talk, say their name, Pika, 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 Pikachu. Can you imagine if that was just the captions? But what Amazon does is they actually, um, instead of putting Pika, 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 Pikachu, they put the emotion behind it. So it'll say uh, determined or, or you know, um, confused or angry um, and instead of, because even though, yes, contextually Pikachu is saying Pika, Pika, Pikachu, if you're just reading that and you don't have the audio, you don't get that context. So Amazon skips the exact wording itself, but gets to the context of it. And I think that's more important. Um, so, I, I, and I feel that same way about, about um, alt text and that same intention is that you want, you want the user to know why that photo is there to begin with. Um, and, and, and Really, few as few it, again. We've stated this a million times through through this webinar. Uh, there will always be exceptions, but just be cognizant of people's times. Even even if a screen reader user is using it at three or even five times speed, um, they still have to have it read to them. So if you have this giant block of text that's practically an article in itself, it can be seen um, as at the very least annoying, depending on the image. Um, is your alt text enforcing your philosophy or brand? 
So what I intentionally left out of my image description of the man is the man in this photo is black. The alt text of this stock photo uh, actually describes him as a project manager. Unfortunately, if we describe a photo as a project manager smiling and giving the thumbs up to the camera, many users are much more likely to picture a white guy in a business suit. Pavan Gurma, a black lawyer often introduced as the deafblind woman who conquered Harvard Law uh, due to her biographical book, has mentioned several times people assume she's white and encourages diversity declarations in alt text as a way to help combat uh, racism, sexism, and other forms of social impression and stigmas. While not an obligation, you should be, uh, if this is important to your organization's message, you should be uh, in the habit of describing things like race, gender, and even sexuality in your alt text. Um, and really don't worry so much about creating the perfect alt text because it doesn't exist. Uh, just, I don't know, describe the image how you would want it described to you and keep that in mind. Um, with that, I've been um, Meg Mimi Miller. I'm the lead developer up at Hannah Business Websites. Um, I'm on Twitter at Code and Whiskey with an E. And um, my uh, LinkedIn um, link is available on the slides, which I think are going to be available for food download. I'm not totally sure about that, but um, I'll post that in the chat. That was great. I think we can. Um, I think we can make the slides available if you want us to. I'll just put. I'll, I'll paste it in the. I'll paste it in the, the 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 chat. I'm never sure how to. You know, I don't. I, I'm. I'm still figuring out LinkedIn anyway, so I don't think it's even that big of a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do have a few questions for you. I'm just going to start with the order that they came in. So the first question, and let me pull it over here so I don't have to look away. Um, how important is it to keep alt text short? And I know you touched on this a little bit about character counts, but maybe you wanna reiterate a little more. Um, this person was saying, I try for sub 150 characters, but at one point you said 200, and then some of the great alt text you provided was longer. Do screen reader user or do screen readers cut off alt text? No, no, they don't. Um, they, um, I haven't tested on my thousand character comic alt text. I'll, uh, I will admit to that, but um, I have in auditing and and having, as I say, I use my screen reader to read articles to me. Um, I, I've never had my screen reader cut off alt text. Um, and, and actually I was reminded to use the example of the NASA photo uh, because I just had it in an article where it, it read everything. Um, it, it's considered additional content and a screen reader won't, shouldn't be cutting that off. I think the thing I've noticed is if you have periods, the screen reader will pause. I don't know if you've noticed this, but the screen yeah. reader will pause and it may not always be clear that you're still listening to the description of the image anymore because yeah. it yeah. says image at the beginning but it doesn't say image done <laughs> at the <laughs> end and so but I don't know if that actually matters but that's the one thing I've noticed when it is longer you might not realize you're still listening to the image description I've seen a lot of like me I'm, I'm a stickler for punctuation and stuff like that but I have actually noticed some alt text where people use it as one big long sentence to avoid such things um, so, and that's, and that's fine. Oh, so they don't use grammatical punctuation. Yeah. 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 They, they use, um, it, it's just one long sentence. Uh, and now that I think about it, that could be a way to avoid, uh, the pauses in screen readers. Uh, so if it doesn't dramatically negatively affect the alt text, um, and, and you're having, and you're finding a problem with that, that, that could be a good, um, alternative, um, but no, screen readers don't have a character limit. Uh, don't cut off the alt text. Mm -hmm. So the next question, Christina asked, if the image is a photograph of a person, would you specify photograph of person's name or just say person's name? And on that same topic, how descriptive should we be when writing about individuals like board of directors, for example? That entirely depends on the context. Um, for example, yeah, staff images. 
Um, it is, you know, you can do person's name headshot. Um, and some people want to go into this. This is also, um, it, it depends on the company. Uh, some companies want to have that alt text there because they want their employees to have a personality. So if you're one of those companies that they're the, the, the photos of your staff are with their dogs and stuff like that, then sure, you may want to go into, you, you can even do, um, you know, something like, um, it makes sure, obviously making sure their name is there uh, is important. And that is, um, uh, you know, uh, so that they can associate with who it is. Uh, I, I think this is a case where adding profile picture in there, you know, so-and-so's profile picture, um, Joe is hugging his chocolate lab or whatever you want to do. But for a lot of companies that just have a million of these photos where they're, all, you know, that's going to get repetitive if you start so-and-so smiling at the camera, so-and-so smiling at the camera, so-and-so smiling at the camera. So it, it's gonna get, uh, it, it, you really wanna consider that that's gonna eventually get repetitive. And it would be, and at that point, you would just probably wanna limit it to their name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this maybe gets a little bit too to the point that you had towards the end about whether or not we should be describing people. Um, so if you or your client I think has the ability to ask their team members, how would they want to be described physically? Like, do they want to include their gender or their race or their age or, you know, with tattoos or, you know, some descriptor of how they look like their haircut, right? Um, yeah. That could maybe provide extra information that could communicate something important to a blind person about the group of people. Uh, it, it very well could, especially, uh, and, and, you know, that also goes back to, to talking about diversity, um, you know, and, then, and I know that you've been very verbal about this uh, discussion in terms of when you're doing a webinar, uh, do you describe yourself or not? And the, at least in the circles I hang out in, you know, a lot of people don't seem to not care about that, uh, the, at least down to the details, um, you know, but uh, it also gets complex if you start thinking about, you know, if you realize, oh, uh, my company is very white, you know, and, and they don't, they may not want to point out that they don't have diversity, uh, you know, and I'm, I don't have an opinion about that either way, but, um, but it, it does, in terms of describing yourself down to the letter like that, it really is going to have to depend on the company. And, and that's going to depend on the person who benefits from it, where some people do find that helpful, while others are, you know, at least down to the details, they don't care. But obviously, if all you're doing is pointing out race, it then gets a little bit muddy. Um, so it really depends on the philosophy of the company and why those photos are there and what you want to reflect. Um, for some people, they don't find that a headshot is, is um, all that important. Um, it also depends on context. You know, if you have um, a blog and you're reporting on, um, you're, you took a picture of your friends at, at um, either a protest or say a pride parade, and you want to put, you know, Jane, a proud black woman, you know, so and so that could be a very important uh, detail that that adds context to the photo. So the, and this is why I think that alt text can't be objective because of these questions. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So uh, let's see. Our next question is, should the alt text try to interpret what the image is trying to convey? Mood, for example, or should it simply focus on literal description of items in the image? I, I like adding mood, like I'm obsessed. Okay, so I love the game Stardew Valley and I'm obsessed with following people about Stardew Valley on Twitter and all of these people have what I can only describe as the coziest looking offices. They post their like very matte toned, you know, 
dim lighting, and it just, you just want to curl up in that office chair and take a nap forever. And to me, the, 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 that is what I get out of those images. So if that's why you're using it and you want to reflect the mood, I think it's perfectly okay to, to describe because that adds, for example, my dragon painting, that is an intense, you know, uh, gloomy almost mood. It, you know, if you have if you don't describe a mood, you may not be describing it. If you have a castle that you're trying to describe the alt text for, you you could be uh, uh, you could describing it objectively may not get the point of cross when you know you're trying to describe the Adams family manner. So it, it, sometimes mood can help add to what that alt, to what that image is conveying. Yeah, and I think there's usually a reason why you selected, you know, a darker castle versus a brighter, fluffier pink castle or something, right? Exactly. You know, Peach's castle or Bowser's castle. So it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. two different castles, two completely different moods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on that note, we did have some laughter when you mentioned a dragon Uber in the chat. And uh, <laughs> a few people were, <laughs> I think someone said they were thinking now of all the other creatures you could have Uber rides on. It, so. <laughs> a, lot, a lot faster than a Subaru. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can you review in a nutshell, the differences between alt text, title, caption, and description on images? So they do have different meanings. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I, 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 I'm always learning about access, accessibility. And um, I am practicing good title um, practice. Um, so uh, title generally is something that you're going to want to use for um, um, a, 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 a link or not, not a link, but a button or something that doesn't have um, an exact uh, text for it, like an icon link. Um, if you're talking about something like the WordPress CMS um, and, you know, you're in the media library and it says title, blah, 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 blah. The title is actually more important for the tab. So say you do have your images uh, set up to be um, to be uh, um, opening an images, um, opening the image in the image file. Uh, that tab can either describe JPEG 865, uh, you know, 500 by 500, or it can describe the title. And that's what the title does um, and, and allows users to, um, it, it's metadata. Um, and um, uh, then it also has the caption, which is obvious. Um, description I don't use. Um, I, I, I mean, I think that is for, um, I, I don't use description, honestly. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be upfront about that. Honestly, I don't use description, but title is more important for the tab, not necessarily the, the um, accessibility portion itself. Don't get me wrong. If you have 8 million tabs and you're looking for that photo, it's a great accessibility photo to, not, to, to know that you're looking for that tab. My understanding is it's not actually correct to have a title attribute and an alt tag on an image. Yeah. Because especially a lot of times they're the same. <laughs> or in WordPress, I, I, yeah. by default, they're garbage because they're your file name. <laughs> the title is. And so it would read the alt and then it would read the title if you had both. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it's sufficient if it's just embedded on the page to yeah. just have alt text, right? And yeah. And I think more of the like more modern WordPress themes don't do that. Mm -hmm. I think older themes, and I've seen some page builders put the title on, but I don't actually think that's correct. And then, yeah, I've never seen the description. I don't know if I've ever used it and I don't even know how you would output the description on the front end. I, I've all, uh, obviously I've always kind of ignored that. Um, you know, it, it, the title, you, you know, title is so important for things like iframes. Um, I mean, I, they're, if, you, if you're ever embedding something, make sure you add that title. Don't make that title um, attribute empty because that is telling users what that is. Uh, but for images themselves, the most important thing that you want is that alt text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. Brian said, we work with a lot of user submitted images or photos. And one thing we've struggled with is describing gender in alt text. Since we don't really know how the individuals identify, do you have a recommendation for cases like that? 
Good question. I guess suppose it would depend on how you're um, getting your, your images. Obviously, if it's through email, it's a lot more complicated. But if it's, I, I'm, I'm just, my, my default answer for any sort of intake is form, digital form, gravity forms. Um, and in which case you would have the opportunity to um, have maybe even a, a, a non-required um, field that says, you know, pronouns or, or, um, or even offer them to provide a description for the alt text themselves while they upload the, the image. Um, this also gives you a little checkbox they can check that says, I agree to let you use this photo on my website. Um, but uh, so that, that is a good question. And I can't really answer that without recommending an overhaul of how you're doing everything, you know, because obviously the, the most direct question is to ask them or to ask users. Um, the other questions or the other, the other options are keeping it vague, using the person by name um, or- um, Just using they, them for everyone. Yeah. So, you know, but that, that is an excellent question. Unfortunately, I can't, short of recommending that you use um, an image upload form um, and, and actually have your submitters fill these fields out themselves, I, I really don't have a good question for you, but it is a good question that I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with as they're, as they're trying to get better at alt text on their websites. Um, Short of that, you know, just like, just do your best, you know, describe it, describe it. I had a, uh, I had a, um, I had a question a while back about, um, you know, gyms, how they have like before and after photos, alt text for those. How do you do that without being insulting or, you know, so it, it, it's just, I think everybody is still figuring it out. And um, and it's still just how you're gonna uh, how you're gonna describe those really depends on your brand, your philosophy, and and um, I mean your alt text is gonna be just as much a reflection of your content as your actual content is, as your word for word content, and it should sound like your company. Um, so I hope that helps. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I can't give you any more very detailed information because it is just like a huge question. Yeah. I think, I think it's really hard, the gendering or providing any sort of identification for people. So I think you're right that if you can ask them, I was just starting to think about this for WP Accessibility Day when we get ready to have like speaker bios and stuff. And I'm thinking probably we'll just put on the form a field that's like, how would you like yourself described in your image? <laughs> like, or write your own alt text here and yeah. they can just write it in, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think uh, someone said there is a question on uh, chat. So let me look. Uh, it says, <laughs> I think this is going back to the chart that you okay. talked about. So it says, if the chart is explained in the text of the post, should you give the description an ID and include the aria described by attribute on the image. And what does the screen reader do in this case? So now we're getting into HTML that everyone might not know. So you might um, want to explain that. Um, and then it says, does it end up just repeating that description multiple times? Or does it end up being too repetitive for users? And if you do use, this is a long question, so if you need me to repeat anything, I will. If you do use ARIA described by, should you still have separate alt text? So I, I love ARIA described by, I think it's, I, I love, I just love it. But um, I don't honestly think that um, it's a good case for, for, um, for images of graphs. There are dynamic graphs that could potentially be, um, because uh, as dynamic graphs are becoming more and more popular um, and they are very rarely accessible. I have found one that outputs an, a halfway accessible graph. Um, and that could be a, a good way, um, but 
I, I, I'm, I, I go right back to, you know, uh, textbook effects uh, where you have, um, I, you know, I use a lot of anchor links to, to, to ensure stuff. And, I, you know, I, I honestly never thought of using ARIA described by specifically for a graph. I don't think it's a good idea for a few reasons. One, um, if you reference the graph later and it's not contained, totally contained, it may, it, it may become confusing. Um, and yeah, you would have to use CID to, to get the, actually, I, I really like this concept. I'm kind of, I'm, wor I'm working it out right now. I don't work with a lot of graphs, so I haven't actually, you know, physically, I don't work with a lot of graphs. I see a lot of graphs. I see the about alt text for a lot of graphs, but I personally haven't implemented a graph into something in a long time, short of doing this slide presentation. And I actually really like this concept. Um, uh, but I, I just think that in this case, it is more effective to have the image, label that that image. So um, with a, with a, a I would I would use a um, some sort of ID for a heading like graph one point one, the image, um, the description, and and then later you can also reference the graph to with an anchor link back up to the graph if that's necessary for users. Um, and that gives you a little bit more freedom instead of being confined within just what you're in the described by, because for some of these graphs, it is paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of text. So I but I, I but I may try this out and test it. I just haven't seen it or tested it myself. So I'm gonna be honest with you about that. try this. And it was so interesting to me out that that's um, the best alternative. Yeah, that's that's something I hadn't thought and I haven't I haven't seen it done and I'm not sure if there's a specific reason or not. I did for anyone yeah. who's not familiar, I popped in the chat a link to Aria described by on um, the Mozilla developer docs because I think they have the best docs on Aria labels. Um, I feel like I see that more for other elements or like interactive elements like you mentioned yeah. rather than images. So, yeah. but the other thing we do, which was a question I was going to ask you if you ever do this, is we sometimes put, so like on a chart or on places like, oh, like Meetup kills me because I'm pretty sure they have a 30 character limit on their alt text when you add the image on meetup.com. It's like so short is we'll just put something like event banner see post for more information right we're like or whatever right we'll literally yeah. say like you know text and graphic you know explain below right or event yeah. details found under this heading like we'll sometimes put literal instructions in the alt text so someone can know where to get that more detailed write-up yeah and i don't know if you do that as well or if you don't like that as much um i i i have been working gradually at trying to figure out um, because there are times like your banners that, that you need to have that text and images. Um, but I also, you know, go out of my way to avoid it. Um, personally, fortunately, you know, or, or, or I, I think about people who use, uh, text in featured images and stuff like that. There are just times when you do it. Um, Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've generally got been able to get away with, with, I haven't had uh, restrictions like that. Um, I do see, uh, for example, on tw going back to Twitter, I follow a lot of cats also on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, instead of providing alt text, they describe the image in the caption. So, you know, it, it, it's about having the alternative, I suppose, because I mean, that that's what that that is one of the golden rules of accessibility is providing an alternative um and so if you're telling them what that image is is how that image is being described by and you tell them that that is the description it's just kind of over there a little bit um that could be a good um a good method as long as they're getting that context for the image 
Yeah. Um, let's see. So we had a question of, should you not abbreviate professional titles like doc, like, should you write out the word Dr. Smith rather than Dr. period Smith? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I think that there is, um, there are certain acronyms or abbreviations that have become so ingrained in us that they are part of the lexicon. So it's, it's like, you know, a screen reader doesn't read out MR, it reads out Mr. So I, I think those cases, uh, it would, cause yeah, I've read I've run the screen reader over over those over those titles, and they have been and they have been read correctly. Um, I think that I think that those have just been the reason you want to avoid non traditional um, uh, ac uh, acronyms and, and whatnot um, in particular are because a screen reader may not be established with them, may even try to read them out or. Um, read them in individual letters without ever defining them or completely misread a word or something like that. So you just want to use the, the, the full um, acronym there and, or not the acronym, but its definition. But uh, titles uh, have generally been read out correctly. Um, you know, that's actually a good question. If you, you know, I also think that that's part of it because the official that that's an official title, you know, you never see on a placard or anything doctor spelled out. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons it's actually implemented into screen readers because that official title is detected as an official title. So I think it's pretty okay to use, you know, doctor, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Miss, you know, uh, well, you know, but all, all spelled out. Um, or all, all abbreviated in their traditional abbreviations. Cause I think they're, I think that's just the official title and they're in there and detected. Um, but it, when in doubt, if you had, if you had, if you have a concern about it, you can put doctor. I just don't think, I think as a title, it's going to be picked up just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Gerson is asking, how would you write alt text to product images that are nearly identical, such as those with slightly different views? So let's say we're going to call it a couch and there's a couch on the front and then there's a couch on the side and there's a couch on the right. Um, and or for like with for products with a lot of photos, it could be too repetitive and I'm not sure where to draw the line between describing each image and avoiding redundancy. I mean, that's a good question. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, if if you're having, a, you know, that's a good way to observe your own um, content. If there's, if you have so many images that are that close together, you may want to consider reducing them um, for your for for your users and for yourself. Um, I, I get it. You know, we've, uh, you know, the there there are, uh, you know, the couch, the front, the side, the back. You still want to describe them. Just be objective. You know, um, a three seater couch. I, I've never described a couch before. How have I gone 30 years without describing a couch? Um, you know, three seater, uh, white, um, each seat has an individual cushion. Um, the, the, it has raised armrests on one side, lowered armrests on the, uh, that's a, that's a fainting couch. Uh, anyway, um, but you do want, you still want to describe them, um, individually you never know what kind of context a person is going to approach these photos you never know which photo they're going to end up on maybe they skip one and then if you if you say refer to other photo they're going to be annoyed so um tr you'll have to treat each photo as an independent en entity at that point because products are just an entirely different ball game and you want to be objective and uh descriptive uh in and, and think about you know you're going to describe this to somebody so maybe even think about it as if you know you have your partners at the store they're buying a couch that day you're on the other phone you've never uh, other side of the phone this is this is 1995 cell phones don't exist well smartphones don't exist uh you know and your spouse is t describing this couch to you and you have to decide if that's the couch you want or not without ever having seen it and so try and describe the couch or whatever product 
the way you would want it described to you to decide if it's a viable product or not. Mm -hmm. I think something that's interesting to think about too, especially as we're thinking about website speed and mobile responsiveness and like, do we really need 50 images? <laughs> I know it's hard, like, especially clients or e-commerce store owners, like they want to show every single little angle, right? But yeah. maybe it's enough to have like a front view, a back view and a side view and to describe each one of those. And like, those are the three or something. Or if you're like zooming in on the product, like why did you zoom in on that detail? Like what needs to, you know, instead of just saying zoomed in on couch, like maybe you're yeah. highlighting the, the foot is shaped in a certain, like it's been carved in a certain way or something, right? You know what I don't get is candles. I think candles have more <laughs> product images than any other product out there. It's like there's one at the front of the candle. And then for whatever reason, you know, this one has a sprig of cinnamon and then, you know, whatever in it. But, you know, it's it's candle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was actually looking at coffee tables on Amazon over the weekend and, you know, they have all these images that kind of make me laugh because they're obviously photoshopped the coffee table into a living room. Yeah. And you kind of want to be like, these are dumb, but at the same time, like they're conveying, this is how it could look in your house and yeah. they're putting it in different styles of houses. And so maybe that's important to like yeah. explain, right? Um a, a follow-up question on this that came up in our last meetup, and I feel like I've heard this question more than once. I'm not sure if this person is here today or not, but um, how do you feel about when the description of the product is literally the title of the product? So it's not like we have a fancy name for our couch. It's literally blue leather 3C couch is the name of the product. Would you still describe it in the alt text? I think so. I mean, you know, you know, let's go back to our hypothetical 1995 conversation of trying to describe, you know, what follow up questions to that to that name would it be? Would, would there be? Um, does it have legs? Or does it or or is there no gap between the ground and and the couch because we have a cat that likes to go under it and claw at your ankles so we really need something that goes all the way to the ground. So there are still more descriptors that are needed when you're describing a product. Um, so and, and those are the things that would be a great, you know, place to elaborate on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Should we be overly concerned with too long alt text, given that the user could tab or otherwise skip to the next item at all? Um, the user doesn't have to listen to all the alt text from the beginning in order to navigate the page, right? They could jump past oh, it. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you just be long on that front because you know they can skip it? Uh, I, you could be certainly that that if you you could have you could have a full on book in there and at any point a screen reader user could be like okay 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 you know it was the the janitor in the library with the coat rack or whatever you know and 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 move on whenever they want so it it, it um you know it, it it would probably depend on the co uh, the context of that once again where, you know, if those images are important and you have important information to convey, you want to set it up so your user will get all of that information. Um, but no, screen reader users are not locked into alt text. They can, they can move out of it as soon as, as, soon as they want to. Uh, what would you say to a professor that doesn't want to add alt text because they think it gives away information when used in a quiz? I would say, well, according to uh, section 504, 504, 504, uh, five, there's oh, a difference well, for funding, yeah. for government funding. Yeah, I would say according to yeah. uh, section 504, uh, you're required by law to provide alt text and uh, you could get the university sued if you're not if you're not doing this. You don't want to be the the butthead that comes in and and, you know, because there's a difference between these legitimate accessibility lawsuits and then those lawyers who are like going, oh, OK, so, you know, we do want to make sure that the movement is doesn't get tainted by that. But at the same time, there are people rebelling against it. Um, when I'm in a bad mood, I go on to the, I, I search the Twitter uh, uh, UX UI design, and people are just bragging about these designs that would just absolutely 
crap all over accessibility, you know, and I, that's not accessible, but um, I try to do better. But, um, you know, we do need to gently encourage people that this is not an option. You know, this is, this is necessary, especially if there's students in the course, uh, then I, I don't, I mean, there is a way to describe, to, to use alt text if it's that serious on a quiz, for example, you know, if, if you're, you know, etymology, you know, and, and it's, it's uh, you can't give away the name of, of any of the spores, you know, whatever. Uh, you can still be vague enough while still describing the image without giving anything away. Um, so, you just tell them that, you know, you're a fancy teacher, aren't you supposed to be good with your words, you know, <laughs> describe it. So you, you can easily do that without, without I mean, um, giving away the answer. I think if it's a quiz, and, and so I'm envisioning, I don't know what this is, but I'm envisioning either there's a picture and there's a multiple choice answers below, or it's like, like a question what is and there's four different pictures and you have to pick the right picture, right? Yeah. I, I feel like, you would have to provide alternative text in order for the student to complete the quiz. But yeah, what it you is need a, to do is yeah. you don't have to say what it is. You literally just describe what it looks like. So yeah, a circle with four spikes coming off of it is one germ. I know nothing about science. <laughs> and a circle with, you know, or sphere <laughs> with yeah. three. And then another thing in the co right corner is a different germ, right? Like, like maybe that's what you do. But I feel like, you, yeah, there's no way that you could not. For, I mean, let's, types. yeah, I mean, even more, even uh, like uh, weirdly complex things like um, a, a bone, you know, say it's a, it's a, it's a femur, you know, you look at this, you look at this image and describe the, you describe what it looks like to somebody that would know that it's a femur, hypothetically, if they're in this course without it's a femur but they they if they're gonna be looking at it by hearing the description of it either way so there are a million different ways your professor could be still be providing alt text while not giving away these quiz answers and it just kind of sounds like he's being lazy no offense professor <laughs> yeah. uh i think we have one last question uh so Jean is wondering, I understand that doc decorative images do not need alt text, but I can't help but wonder if that empty field creates confusion. Do people just assume it's decorative or might they think they are missing some content that have been neglected? And so it might be helpful to talk about what happens if an image has empty alt text. Absolutely nothing. It is empty alt text is completely skipped over. It doesn't exist. It, it is, it, you know, paragraph, decorative image paragraph it is paragraph paragraph it does not get read and that is what is important and it's the same it that all of this by the way is not just your website this applies to microsoft word documents powerpoint presentations pdfs uh, you know and once you because there is an accessibility tab in all like microsoft products you know and you can identify those as decorative uh images and it completely skips it over the, the purpose of defining something as decorative is marking it as unimportant. You are not wasting a user's time whatsoever by, because decorative images like that, sighted users see out of the corner of their eye and ignore. And it provides that same, um, it provides that same courtesy to screen reader users. Um, so nothing happens. Empty alt text, it is invisible, it's completely invisible to a screen reader. Yeah, so it's really only a problem if the alt attribute is not on the image at all. Mm. It's just graphic blank, graphic. Yeah. yeah, or it'll try and read out the file name, which could be really bad. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, uh, so I think we are about at time. Oh, wow. Um, so thank you so much. So much for all this information. Could you just tell everyone again where they can get a hold of you yes. if they want to follow? I've got up? links. Um, here's my. I'm posting right now. I'm posting my LinkedIn that I never check. Um, I I don't know how to use LinkedIn, but oh, I do. I don't know. 
Um, I'm now also posting on, uh, I'm posting my Twitter um, also in the chat um, where I'm a little bit more active for now, depending on how the direction of Twitter goes. Um, but I'm happy to answer questions um, uh, and, and yeah, I'm happy to answer questions. Okay, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, for everyone who's here, if you're interested and you're available at 10 a.m. tomorrow, check our meetup and go register for the website accessibility panel discussion with WordPress VIP. And I'm gonna sign off, but we need to wait just a second so the transcript can fully update for anyone who might be relying on reading that. So we're gonna sit quiet for a minute. You feel free to log off and then I will officially end it.